Soy el mero mero. <laughs> wow, I can sing. <laughs> So welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out to the opening of Tatiana Cardona's show <laughs> at Diafano. Uh, my name is Betty. Uh, my usual co-host Yanesi is celebrating their birthday. So we love and miss you Yanesi. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, talking with me today. Uh, I usually just like to start off asking artists about their practice. Um, just to get a sense of what your studio setup is like, how you work. Um, so I work at home. I have a garage. It's like a little townhome apartment in Miramar, which is in Broward. And I just have like a little studio set up in my garage. I have a kiln in there. I have all my little clay supplies. And I work every single day. And I'm just in there like morning till night. Amazing. So this yeah. is your full time, full time job. Full time job. Incredible. Yes. Incredible. Um, so I went through your FAQ on your Instagram. Yes. Which is very impressive. Just oh, your you. Instagram is like very well organized and consistent. Yeah. Um, and I saw that you have a fine arts background. Yes. So did you study something else in school or were you already studying ceramics? No, I just only studied art, fine art. I tried every medium, so I tried photography, I tried painting, um, but ceramics was just like the thing that stuck with me. I'm really good at just working with my hands, like just holding like the tactile qualities of clay. Mm -hmm. it just It's better than anything else, but it's also one of the hardest mediums to work with, in my opinion, so if I could change it, I would, but it's just like, it's just what comes to me. Yeah. I really didn't choose it. Like, I really don't feel like I did because I wouldn't have. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. Um, and I saw that you taught yourself a lot of... Um, yeah, throwing. Yeah. Um, I taught myself how to throw because in college, well, I went to FIU and the art program there was like good-ish. Um, Ceramics was pretty popular, but the classes are more focused on hand building, and the teacher was kind of already spread thin, so she wasn't going to sit there with each student and teach them how to throw. So I just kind of decided I wanted to learn, and I watched YouTube videos for a good month, and I learned. <laughs> while you were in school? Or yeah, after? while I was in school. So I didn't have like a wheel or anything at home, and I wanted to kind of sell mugs, but I knew that to do that in a faster way, I would learn. I would have to learn how to throw. So I just kind of taught myself so I could sell them. <laughs> yeah. That's that's awesome. I think there's like a in the past decade, there's more of a movement towards DIY sort of yeah. practices, and that institutional validation and education is not necessary to right. take something up or create something. Right. So I was very excited to have you uh, have this show at Diafano because. Mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting to see somebody doing something that's not necessarily in the range of what some people would define as fine art because it is also a craft. Right. And there is a utility to a lot of the things that you make. Yeah. And that brings me to a question which is like a large debate in art is yeah. the distinction between fine art and craft. I think there's a lot of bias right. in terms of and like a hierarchy to what art is the most valid. For some reason, painting seems to be For some reason, the yeah. most valid right. form of art, which is, it's all subjective and uh, Yeah, actually, at, um, my last trip to Enseca, which was a year ago, I also had this nagging question as to like, why is it that all of these mugs, which take so much effort, work, hours, just as much as a painting, were displayed on some table and all spread out like this, while a painting is like hung up and lit up and takes so much effort. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering and contemplating the same question, and 
I kind of want to bridge that together. Uh, I think that ceramics and clay should most definitely be seen as a fine art because it is an art and it's hard. And I feel like just how people make jewelry and paint, like these are crafts, but like at the end of the day, it's just because it has a function that it makes it less, um, I don't know, yeah. fine. It's a very like Euro European sort of standard to apply right. to something that to be art, it should be functionless. Right. And I mean, that's like as like evident in Marcel Duchamp, right? He literally took functional objects and made them unfunctional and then exactly. they could be art, which is sort of, I think it was slightly like a F you to the art exactly, world to be yeah. like, that's the only reason. Which why reason. there's so much like controversy with him and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like a hundred, I like, I started off everything because I wanted to create functional art. So like people would always ask me like, why is the mug so expensive or whatever? It's art, I just decided to give you a function with it mm -hmm. so that it has more value to you as a user. Precisely, I was thinking exactly that. There's like more intimacy with the work yeah. because it's incorporated into some sort of routine you have, you know? Exactly. It's something that you sort of interact with and use intimately. Every single day. Every single day, and it can be attached to something very emotional even. Yeah, like know? a ritual and like a morning routine. And exactly. right now everyone's like, oh, what's your morning routine? What's your morning routine? And then today reflecting also like, every morning I use this mug, but it's not one of my mugs. And then <laughs> I was just like, this mug sucks. And I was just like, I hope that whoever out there has my mugs and uses it like every single day mm -hmm. that they feel a little bit special or a mm -hmm. little bit better just because they're using yeah. something that has like been done with more intention, more care. Yeah. And it is art. It's just, I don't know, it's just changing people's view. Yeah. On it. I definitely have a favorite mug that <laughs> yeah, I'm I think always, everyone does. it's like bittersweet because I want to use it, but then right. I know you don't wanna, like, I'll have time away from it. <laughs> and have to use my yeah. lesser You want to make it special. <laughs> you don't want to take its like special quality away. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to use it every day. Completely, completely, I agree. Um, so this like motif of lips, I feel, is, is what you're most known for. Yes. And uh, we see some of it here, but I see you bringing a lot more things that I didn't see on your page. Right, a it's lot new, more yeah. Portraits. Yeah. Are those self-portraits? It is like a rendition of myself, but I just feel like it's more like a a uh, stylized version of like an inner child energy. Yeah, um, I definitely get the playfulness. Yeah, I don't think I was like, oh, let me make myself. Mm -hmm. I think it was just born out of like, my inner child just wanted to make it. And I, ever since I was little, I would make these little, like, I would draw books, mm -hmm. like in papers, and then I would punch holes and tie them together, and it would be like a little storybook of like me and my dog or something like that. So I think that was just coming out and just kind of expressing that, but with clay. That's beautiful. So yeah, um, it's kind of a portrait, but what I am known for is the lips. Yeah. yeah. Is that, how do you feel about that? Are there times where you dislike that? Do I, you find it limiting at all or? It's very limiting. I feel like that's why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to break out of that a little bit. I do love it and I do appreciate all that it's given me. I mm -hmm. think that I wouldn't have the, I don't know, following mm -hmm. or, it's you know, people love it. Immediately, I Googled uh, like lip ceramics and the first thing that comes up after defining what a lip is on <laughs> something <laughs> was you. Wow, so that's crazy. That is really, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's crazy and it's really helpful, you know, for yeah. you to be found, your visibility and stuff. Yeah, it's helpful. I mean, I've gotten so many opportunities and projects because of it, but as an artist, I think that's more like if I was just like product based, mm -hmm. it would definitely be super easy to just like mm -hmm. pump these out and yeah. call it a day. But since I am an artist, it's like super hard because I have to fight inside myself where yeah. like, do I stay comfortable or yeah. do I do what I actually want to do and grow as an artist mm -hmm. and be an artist because at the root of everything, I started what I did because I was an artist mm -hmm. and I just wanted to give function to that art. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like kind of blurred the lines and like I've also noticed that I started making lips that were only the ones that were popular or on my, on mm -hmm. my site or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of stopped experimenting even within that boundary. Yeah. So I was just like, I need to like completely break out of it and then maybe come back with a different perspective and I don't know, here we are. 
here we are, and I think you did a really great job breaking out of it. Thank it's you. consistent to your style, but really, really intriguing. I want to sort of like go through some of the pieces. Yeah. I love this vase. Thank you. Um, again, I think this is a really good example of you sort of playing with the blurred line between utility and art, art yeah. because even like the little flowers in the hair of the vase are kind of referencing the fact that the purpose of a vase is to hold flowers, yeah, which is fun. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I'm glad that you noticed that because that was literally like, it was, it's just like a girl encompassed in hair because like that's, I have had huge hair since I was little and it was just something that always was pointed out to me and I just wanted to like add flowers and I'm like, I'm gonna put flowers on this face. Like that's what it's used for and I just kind of wanted to highlight like, yes, this is something, mm -hmm. but you can use it. Yeah. And like there was other pieces here that are just sculptures and that was really hard for me to do. Like really hard for me to understand that I would like be making a sculpture, but I'm like, what is it gonna do? Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's okay if it doesn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay if it's just a sculpture. Like, it's okay if it doesn't hold things or whatever. Yeah. So it's really hard to kind of break out of that too. Yeah. Well, this one is a really fun example of that, the altar, because it is part sculpture and then it has like smaller functionless sculptures yeah. inside. So its function is to hold other- Other art. <laughs> other art. And also I see a photo, is that your parents? Yeah, or? those are my parents. That's really sweet. They're Thank beautiful. You. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, that's when they were in their golden year. <laughs> they were cute. <laughs> we talked a lot about altars actually in the last uh, show we had here yes, with Gabriella. Yeah, I was here, yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't want to just totally go back through the whole shtick, but I do think altars are like a very significant thing. Yeah, very Cross personal. culture is very mm -hmm. personal. What is, what is the meaning to you for this piece? Um, I just wanted to kind of make an altar for my inner child. Um, I lost my dad at a really young age. Um, I was nine, and that kind of, not just losing your parent is traumatizing, but then what it does to your family and how it just completely alters every dynamic that you thought you had. Like, your mom changes because she's grieving the loss of her husband. And these are things you can't understand until you're older. Mm -hmm. As a child, you're just like, thinking this is only happening to you, but mm -hmm. it's happening to everyone else. Yeah. And so it's coming now, going through this, it's just like me understanding everything that my mom had to go through, my brothers, everything. And I just wanted to kind of create a little altar to her, just kind of like reminders of things that make you happy or things mm -hmm. that like are still playful and life is still good even though, you know, this happened and mm -hmm things turn out okay. Like it's, it's dark, but it turns out okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really beautiful. Thank you. And I think it's also a really nice kind of message of how we all have inner children, even our parents. Exactly. You know, and it's, it's when you become an adult, you realize like you recognize their experience and exactly. see that sometimes their inner child is like just as confused exactly. as you were when you were a kid. Yeah, and just you because know? they became parents doesn't make them like all knowing mm -hmm. or like we obviously as children think they're like gods mm -hmm. and you soon as an adult, you're like, if I were to have a kid right now, like I don't know anything. <laughs> and yeah. then you realize like they were just doing the best that they could at yeah. the time and you know, you kind of have to like just be okay with that and kind of love them and love them how you want yourself to be loved as a parent or, you know, by anyone because mm -hmm. that's just, they did the best they could. Yeah, very yeah. true. That was really sweet. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for getting emotional with me. <laughs> <laughs> Call your mama right now. <laughs> I'm calling my mom after this. <laughs> um, okay. So, whew. can we talk about this piece? Yes. Um, so this one, my dad used to, he was an artist, so he would make me everything. So at the time I was really spoiled and like wanted what all the kids wanted, but he would make my Halloween costumes, my pinatas, like he would make everything by hand. So he would make me my little Halloween mask with like a butterfly. Mm. And so I made like a little sculpture kind of encompassing that moment 
because like now I can understand how special that is and how I want to kind of pass that down to my kids. And like, I wouldn't want to store by like a costume or something like that. It's not as special because mm -hmm. I remember every single costume that I had and yeah. how much he was so into it yeah. and he would like do my makeup and he would want it to be like super realistic and I would look so ugly. <laughs> like, if you're going to be Dracula, you're going to wear white makeup all yeah. over your face. You're going to slick your hair back. You're going to look <laughs> like Dracula. And I'm oh, wow. like, oh, I don't want to look like Dracula. Like, what? So he would get super into it, but now you can appreciate those things. So yeah. I just kind of wanted to encompass, like, that mask he made me in, like, that moment. Because it's, yeah, it's pretty special. That's awesome. Thank you. That's really cool. I love I love parents who make their kids costumes. <laughs> it's such a good it's, trait. I mean, people don't do that anymore. But yeah, yeah, it's important, and it's nice yeah. to like show a kid that you don't need to buy something to be happy. Right, and it's like the creativity, kind of like even putting the show on. I was just like thinking, like, what would he do? Because I had so much times where I was like, okay, like I, the thing I wanted didn't work out. Like and then this one didn't work out, and then this one didn't work out. So I'm like, option, like now what do I do? But you have to mm -hmm. like get creative, and like I don't think I would have those skills mm -hmm. if it weren't for being raised how I was. So yeah, it's all comes together full circle. That's awesome, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I also really like, there's a hidden sculpture yes. <laughs> behind the altar. Yes. Um, that was such a treat to find, I <laughs> gasped. I <was> like, <gasps> <laughs> It's hidden in there, yeah. It's a little cigarette, uh, hand holding a cigarette. I thought it was funny because this pedestal has a little compartment. Yeah. And then I was like, this sculpture kind of is like blowing smoke up your ass, <laughs> you know? So that's why I put it there, because it's like just like right there in that spot. Um, that sculpture is actually part of a bigger one that I hate a lot. Oh. <laughs> so then I just took the hand out and yeah, put it there. Was it all like one piece and you removed so it? So it was or? like, it's a, um, it's also like a portrait thing. It's like a huge sculpture. Okay. And then she had a hand. It's actually inspired by a sculpture by Botero. Okay, Which is cool. like a Colombian sculpture artist. Yeah. And there's a lot of controversy with him too, but. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like, yeah, I wanted to ask you your influences. Well, I love Frida Kahlo like a lot. I know that's like so corny or whatever, but. I don't care. We all love her because she's yeah. great. <laughs> I love her. I think what she did for art, for female artists, is just insane. Like, anybody in the world you can ask, like, mm -hmm. name a female artist. The first thing they're going to say is Frida Kahlo. Mm -hmm. And she's Mexican. And it's just so beautiful and so powerful. I mean, they're going to say Frida Kahlo or Georgia O'Keeffe. Yeah. So I might say that. But it's just crazy because she's Mexican. And she's on the Mexican, like, dollar she's like yeah. in their money so I'm just like that's insane yeah like, that's her impact her impact like just her portraits like the shit that she went through and was just focused on like her art mm -hmm. and focused on doing what she wanted to do even if she was in fucking bed like yeah dying in pain like yeah that's crazy yeah so she I really just, put it all into her art yeah I just I admire her no matter what she went through she really just did what she wanted to do so and she had like a like a super famous husband, but like mm -hmm. she overcame him. So yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, she overshadowed <laughs> yeah. him, which is really, really cool. Which is awesome because most women like yeah. Like Jackson Pollock's wife, you mm -hmm. know, like she did most of this shit too. Mm -hmm. And w nobody talks about her. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> She's inspiring. Um I really like her like portraits, her focus on herself, so I kind of got inspired by that, and I was like, I kind of want to do that in my own way with clay, and that's kind of what I did. Yeah, I can definitely get that sense of, well, obviously, not only is your like moniker female al alchemist, so yeah. I can tell that you have this emphasis on like the feminine, but even in the lips, you know, there's like a sensuality, but also kind of like a playfulness, and I think that's consistent with Frida. She has this kind of confrontational style where she's leaning into the feminine but also sort of like opening up that like the feminine doesn't just mean like sweet and demure it can mean exactly. like intense and even like at times grotesque yeah. and I think that's like where the power comes from is like that sort of like solidness that there's like a softness and I see this a lot there's such a softness to it like it just looks so soft but it also looks so solid yeah you know 
And they're heavy too. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, they're heavy. <laughs> but yes, I definitely see that. I, I, yeah, I just love like the way that she portrays everything, like just life in itself, the way that she portrays her pain, especially, and all the things that happen to her in her life. Mm -hmm. um, she does have a more honest and like upfront way of mm -hmm. doing that and like displaying like all the pain. Mm -hmm. Whereas like mine is more playful. Like I'm just, I want you guys to like, I want people to like it first and then kind of ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And I want to, like, I want you to be drawn to it. Mm -hmm. I want you to definitely be like, oh, that could be in my house and have no meaning whatsoever. But also I can know what it means to me mm -hmm. or how it makes me feel. So I didn't want it to be so specific to me that yeah. it was like impossible for other people to relate to it. Because I feel like for, w with Frida, it's like really specific to her. Yeah. But it, it, that's what makes it beautiful. But mm -hmm. I just wanted something more like, this is my story, but you can add whatever story you want yeah, to you it. Yeah, you can sort yeah. of project yourself into it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's, we've talked about that a lot on the show, that that's like a very successful way to sort of connect with a, a viewer yeah. as an artist. Um, I wanted to ask you about your business because not only are you an artist, but you're a successful businesswoman. Yes. Um, and I think it's really important as artists to understand how to make a practice sustainable financially for yourself. Yeah. So how did you kind of go about this? When did you really feel like things were taking off for you? Well, that was definitely due to COVID. Okay. Um, yeah, 2020, TikTok, right time, honestly, like, I posted about two or three videos and it was like the height of like, COVID just started and TikTok just, people were just getting into yeah. TikTok because we're locked up, we don't have anything to do. And I just started posting literally like the videos I already had mm -hmm. and one of them just like hit. And before that I was selling stuff but it wasn't sold out or anything. Like mm -hmm. I would sell like a piece here and there and it was like my little lip stuff. And um, I was n in no way paying the bills, but after COVID, like I couldn't make enough pieces for everybody. So it was just like, what the, demand the fuck? Was so yeah, great. the demand was crazy. So then people were like, why are your prices so high? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, there's 200,000 of you trying to get one mug. Like I yeah. can't do that. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's your time. Yeah, it's, your time it's a lot your of effort, time. you know? Yeah. So, We've tried to make molds. We've tried to like mm. reproduce them. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, because of the shape of the lip and the voluptuousness of it, mm -hmm. it's really hard to make a mold. But we're trying still. We're mm -hmm. like trying to create it to be more accessible for everybody. Yeah. Because I I understand like people can't pay that or want yeah. to pay less, and I don't want to exclude people from this. It's not my purpose, mm -hmm. but it's just like right now, this is how many I can make. Yeah, and you this are is one person. It's making one these. person, yeah. So. Yeah, that's remarkable. Yeah, <laughs> but COVID really, like, it was just perfect timing. Um, I also am really big on risk taking. Um, I quit my job. I was like working at Whole Foods. This was not paying the bills, but I am one to like when I'm sick of something. I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm just like, I quit. You'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and I just <laughs> left, and I was like, I'll figure it out. I don't really care. And it just all worked out. I feel like when you trust in yourself mm -hmm. more than anything, then it works out yeah, more outlook often is, than not. Yeah, outlook is everything, yeah. for sure. Um, let's see. I have so many questions in here. It's, like, hard for me to focus. Um, do you ever take commissions, or are you just... I do. Yeah. Um, through email, like mostly boyfriends are like, Aww. my girlfriend <laughs> wants this so bad. I don't know how to get it to her. And I'm just <laughs> like, I feel so bad. I'm like, I can't imagine their girlfriend like, babe, look at this. Like, I really <laughs> want this. Like, please. Like, and then like they can't get to it fast enough, so they don't know how to check out. So like all this stuff. So sometimes I do it if I have the time. I do customs and stuff, but not often. Sometimes. <laughs> um, I also saw that you've like sold some works to some really high profile people. Who is like yes. the most exciting person where you're like, I can't believe they want my work. 
Um, I think Emma Roberts. That was crazy. That's crazy. Because like I was like an unfabulous girl. <laughs> like I loved unfabulous. Like her best friend, the one that like made clothes or something like that. Yeah. I was like, I want to be her when I grow up. Like whatever. So I was like freaking out. Um, I love Emma Roberts. Haley Williams too. Like yeah. that was insane. She was my first like celebrity client or whatever. So crazy. Like, what the fuck? Like. This is crazy. Yeah. I was like screaming all over my house. Yeah. I'm like, hey, we will. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they're like the biggest one. But working with like Fenty was really cool. And also, um, I made like 10 mugs for Heidi Klum, which I didn't really post about, but that was really cool because she has like a, um, a biracial family. And so she asked me to make like half like dark mugs and half light mugs. And I was Whoa. just like, why like what <laughs> and then I looked her up and she was like married to seal and so all her kids are like yeah. and I was like oh that's so cool yeah that's actually really really cool um as your business pract and practice expands like where do you see it taking you you've kind of talked about the molds and stuff and how you want to make things that are like slightly less functional at times right. like where what do you see in your future um I'm trying to like bridge the two together mm -hmm. this i i want to get more into the sculpture work and more mm -hmm. fine art world situations and more solo shows and and stuff like that i really enjoy like being able to do that but i also love my mugs and i also love those things so i do want to try to create these molds like mm -hmm. try to get those out as soon as i can um just to like continue making them and being able to at a quicker speed yeah and having time to work on my personal stuff because that's important to me and I do want to continue it but I don't want to abandon like what I've made mm -hmm. um so I'm just working on that I hope that it works out <laughs> somehow I think I think it will I think you've been doing a good job so I Thank think as you. long as you keep it up you <laughs> seem pretty you. unstoppable <laughs> Thank you. um a few other things I wanted to say were just, I think, like back to the like art versus craft debate, I think there's like an impact of, it's like also a cultural thing. Like we kind of talked about how it's a Western standard. Um, and I think there's also a gendered issue with it too, the history 100%. of women creating crafts, you know, 100%. weaving and so on, that that's sort of treated as like not high art or I guess like not intellectual is I think like a lot of people's biases against it. Um, yeah, like what are your feelings about the cultural maybe like stigma against craft and the gendered stigma? Well, here I feel like we have the privilege to kind of think about those things because mm -hmm. like in other countries, um, let's say like Colombia or South American countries where people make ceramics or make these things for a living, mm -hmm. but they get paid like, you know, what doctors like I don't know <laughs> it's just like the difference between America and like another you know less fortunate type of place yeah we have the privilege to even have this question to mm -hmm. even think about these things I don't think that that if we were somewhere else we'd be asking this mm -hmm. I think that crafts take just as much work yes. as much passion these people who create these things in other places, they love it too. Mm -hmm. And they dedicate their lives to it too. Mm -hmm. And it's just because of where they are that it's not, you know, paid the way that it's paid here. And, you know, people that paint those paintings like in China and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that it's mass produced, like Picasso paintings and stuff like that, they still paint them and take hours to replicate each painting and they don't get paid what Picasso would have gotten paid, you know yeah. what I mean? Or what that painting is worth. Yeah. But it's just because it's not from the artist itself, mm -hmm. which I understand. But it's, I just hope that somehow we come to a place where both these things can be valued the same. Mm -hmm. And by no matter who it is, yeah, girl, boy, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I just feel like people need to respect the work that is put into everything, the passion, the love, the care, the intention, mm -hmm. all these things come with whatever you're buying. Yeah. So I think if people are also more aware 
of what they purchase, more aware and intentional of what they are consuming, mm -hmm. then these problems will dissipate. It's just kind of like an internal decision between everybody mm -hmm. to like, okay, I'm not going to buy this thing from Marshalls. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy this $70 mug from someone who made it with love. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Because, I don't know, it's just, like, more important. And people are just so ready to, like, buy, 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 buy so many things, like fast fashion and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah. When people are literally, like, making a dress and putting their heart into it and... Yeah. You don't want to pay like fifty more dollars. Yeah. You want to pay two dollars for a yeah. dress, which for is something like crazy. that you'll like probably buy and discard over and over to the point that if you've made the investment in the fifty dollar right, piece exactly. that you love and stays with you. Exactly, and you like know? you could pass it down. Like mm -hmm. people used to make clothes for their children. Mm -hmm. Like people used to literally like my grandma would make clothes for every single one of her daughters, and that's what they would wear for a week, two weeks, three. Like they would have that dress forever, and it was like one dress. So it's just like more of like being okay with not having the latest trend or whatever, like mm -hmm. just being more specific on what you're buying. Yeah. Yeah, what you're consuming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we kind of wind down, I always like to ask this question towards the end of what advice you would give to somebody who's an aspiring artist, but also maybe in your case, somebody who's aspiring to sort of set up a business for themselves be organized <laughs> um, I am not that um, be organized get an accountant as soon as you start because then they have to like backtrack and it's gonna cost you more money I think it's something that nobody talks about it's uh -huh. boring and it sucks but as an artist I don't have that brain mm -hmm. I don't think with that brain that brain is literally useless to me <laughs> I don't know why but like math and numbers literally like I don't know, they're like in the air. They don't make any sense to me. So I tried to do it by myself, tried to do everything on my own. And it's just easier when you let other people help you or delegate the tasks that you are not good at. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be really helpful. Even if you're starting out, if you're not making any money, like mm -hmm. when you start your business, get an accountant yeah. or get someone who knows yeah. to give you advice yeah. on how to start on a good place, at the right place. And mm -hmm. so that way you don't have to backtrack. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say to just believe in yourself. I know that's corny and a lot of people say that, but if you hate your job, you're not going to quit until you have to, like, until, you know, like, you're not going to do what you want to do until you have to. Mm -hmm. So if that's what it takes, if that's what it takes for your personality, mm -hmm. that you have to be left with nothing in order for you to do what you want to do, yeah. then then do it or just put yourself in the environment to make yourself do what you want to do mm -hmm. because some people will take the easy way out every single time yeah and then that kind of like goes in your head and stays in your head forever yeah. like oh I want to do this I want to do this like nagging at you yeah but you stay doing what you want to what you're doing because you're comfortable yeah forever and then like you're 50 and you're miserable mm -hmm. but it's like you could have just done that at 25 or 18 or 30 or mm -hmm. 40 doesn't matter but the sooner you start the more ahead you are yeah so absolutely it's just like if you have to do it right now do it like you're gonna be okay most of the time <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully awesome awesome yeah my friend always says it's better to be in free fall than stuck exactly that's you know? perfect way to put it like i would just rather trust that something good will happen if I t make this decision if it's something that you really feel in your gut not that it's like oh I saw someone online and mm -hmm. now I want to do it and like, yeah <laughs> you know it's like something you just thought about no. if it's something that's like eating away at you or it's something in your gut that you feel you have to do then that's your intuition that's like people aren't aware what their intuition is people mm -hmm. are like so separate from themselves mm -hmm. with like technology and Instagram and all this stuff like people are really unaware of their own consciousness mm -hmm. so they don't know what these things like that they're being asked to do mm -hmm. what that is but creativity is literally your nature like that comes from God God is creativity God created you your nature is to create whatever that is it doesn't matter but 
if it's gnawing at you, it's for a reason. That's what you had, to, what you have to do, what you came here to do. God will help you. Like those dreams that you have come from God, and God will help you create them if you trust in yourself and trust in God enough. And by God, I don't mean like a man in the sky. I mean whatever you believe in uh -huh. doesn't matter. The universe, mm -hmm. the spirit, whatever it guides you. Mm -hmm. That, that's those dreams come from that energy, and mm -hmm. that will put you forth. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Thank this you. has been really, really insightful. It's also been just very inspiring. Thank you. Um, it's so exciting to see somebody challenge themselves so much and like do something <laughs> so new for a show, you know? And it really paid off. You know, thank this you. is a really good lesson to us all to take the hard road because it yeah. is more rewarding. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you everybody for listening. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I love you guys. And very quickly, I just wanted to say thank you to Diafano. Um, yes, thank you to Steph. Thank you to Stephanie. Thank you to Concreta Sala. Thank you to Miami Community Radio. And thank you to Shotgun. And yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Woo!